In this video, we're going to continue to talk about the console view and focus on virtual instruments. Now, the relationship between instrument tracks and virtual instrument channels in the console view is really simple in Studio One, but it's a little bit different than other digital audio workstations, and it's a point of confusion for people who are coming into Studio One who might have used a different system. So one of the best ways to clarify it is that an instrument track and a virtual instrument channel are not the same thing. They're actually completely separate concepts, but they're connected together. And so once you kind of understand that, it gets a lot easier when you're using these. So this song has four virtual instruments, so there's also four virtual instrument tracks. You can see that drums is connected to impact, or it's pointed to impact. So basically, here's our note data, essentially our MIDI data and it's pointing or playing into the impact instrument. Now down here, if we click on instruments, here are all of our virtual instrument instances that are loaded, and for each of those, we have at least one output channel like this. So really what's happening here is the drums are playing through impact, the note data is coming into impact, and then the channel for impact is right here. So to control the volume, we can control it right here. To control panning, we can control it right here. By default, if you drag impact in to create a track, the channel down here is named for the virtual instrument. Of course, the track up here could be named anything you want. If you like these things to be synchronized, then you'd need to rename this to something like drums if you want it to match. Now, the reason it works this way is that I could have several tracks pointed to the same virtual instrument. So right now, I have Presence playing this piano sound. If I wanted to change my bass sound to also use Presence, I can simply reassign it here. Now I've got two instrument tracks pointed to the same virtual instrument. Now I showed you this before. If I delete a track, so I'll just take this track out. I'll right click and do Remove Track. Now that the track is removed, you can see that Mojito 2, which was the instrument assigned to that track, it's still here in the instrument pane, but it's just grayed out because there's nothing connected to it. To take it out, I can click right here and remove it. The other thing I can do is to create a new track to use that instrument by just dragging Mojito back up into the track view, and now I've created a track to go with it. Now, if you have a large project, sometimes it's a little difficult to find the channel that you're looking for. So with virtual instruments, you can always right-click and click Show in Console, and it will select and even open that channel so you can see the effects and any sins on it. Now, some virtual instruments have the option to have multiple outputs, and this is particularly true of drum modules or drum-based synths. And the one that we're using here is impact. So if we look right here on impact, which is our drums, we can expand this out to offer more than just a stereo output. So I'm going to double click on impact. Here is our user interface for this. And you can see that we can adjust the output of each pad to go to a mono output in this particular case, or it can go to a stereo output. As I make these changes, signing these to different outputs, you can see that they'll also appear right here in the console as I activate those different outputs. You control them normally over here in this instrument panel area. If I click on impact and hit expand, then you can see a list of all available outputs or all the outputs that are being used, and I can turn them on or off so that they're either active or not active in the console view. If you have a third-party drum instrument like TuneTrack Easy Drummer, then it works very similarly. Let me find Easy Drummer. Easy Drummer. I'm going to drop a track of Easy Drummer in. Now you'll see that Easy Drummer also appears in the list of all my virtual instruments. Now if I click right here to expand it, here are all the individual outputs for Easy Drummer. So if you go into the mixer on Easy Drummer, like this, you can see that you can assign the different microphones to different outputs, and they're called Track 1, Track 2, etc. in Easy Drummer. And then here, you can pick up those outputs. So this Track 2 is Easy Drummer 2. Now I have a channel coming off of this output. This would work very similar in any of these multi-out drum machine type instruments. 
This gives us a great deal of control when mixing because we can have individual faders, pan settings for each of those outputs, and if we go into this view here, we can put individual insert effects or send effects on all of those outputs separately. Now to remove a virtual instrument out of the project, you need to remove it from this area here. So I'll do remove, and I'll also remove mojito. Let's just take a look at the trash. You'll see that both of those virtual instruments, the built-in mojito and the third-party Easy Drummer, both appear in the trash bin and can be easily restored with a right click and then clicking restore. And that brings it right back into the project. If I wanted to connect this to the Easy Drummer track, I could just either drop it right there and we're ready to go. Or if I wanted yet another track, I can drop it up here and create another track. So that's how instrument channels work in the Studio One console view. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.